This the main lesson is... Take oh, number sorry. five, okay. Rabbi Abba Branchbiel, and it's November 26, 1998. Okay, thank you. The main lesson is, first of all, to remember the tragedy, to remember the, what happened to us, to remember the chuvm. I, I use the word chuvm, I think, is the best. The Hebrew word says it more than anything else. Uh, I remember the, uh, I, the main lesson of the chuvm should be, to, first of all, to remember it. And the, what the world should learn from it is that it's possible to be cultured and educated and yet be murderous and use science to destroy your whole people. And the world should learn from it uh, to leave us alone and not, not, uh, not pressure us like now that they are pressuring us in Eretz Yisrael. They should learn t that, that we were the victims and we were not the oppressors. And as such, we des the Eden deserve a lot of credit and a lot of sympathy from the rest of the world. Simply because of what happened to us. Because we were, p we were singled out by a so-called uh, cultured n but really vicious nation that tried to annihilate uh, Claudius Hoel. And I believe that the uh, Germans were descendants of Amalek. They were the Amalekim of our generation. And uh, the Maise, we won, not Hitler. The Maise, the, the Jewish nation continues to exist. It, we flourished after the, after the Holocaust, and in Mir Hashem, we should continue to flourish, and the Mashiach should come, Be'ez Hashem. Amen. Thank you. Oh, oh, you were talking to me. Okay. This is a picture of my Zayda Abba. Where is he in the picture? In the, this is in Demblin. On which side of the picture? Uh, the one to the left, the shorter one. The other one, I do not know who it is. Uh, How did you get this photo? My parents gave it to me. Uh, my, okay. I should explain. Oh, this is a picture from the camp in, in Demblin. On the picture, you see the German commandant. I do not know his name. And in the middle, you have the Jewish uh, uh, Lagerführer, he was called. His name was Mr. Benkard, or something like this. And I do not know who the other two, this, who, the, who this boy is. And who the other yeet is, they, they were ha ha holding a dog, I don't know what. But it was taken in the camp itself. This is a picture of my father in his later years. What's his name? His name was uh, 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 Rab Label Bronspiegel. Okay, this is a picture of my first wedding. To the left is my father in law, Rab Munk. Rebetzin Munk, then comes my first wife, Miriam, and I am, without the beard, to the right. Okay, this is a picture of my mother in her later years, together with my two brothers. To my left, to the left, is my brother Yisroel. Then the, the middle one, uh, it's me, next comes my mother. And to the right is my brother Yossel, who was a photographer, and he made most of these pictures here, he made. Uh, this is a picture of me and my Rebbe, Rabbi Yashiber Salavechik, Zuchoyne Levrocha. It was at uh, the Smicha, at the Chag Smicha in Yeshivas, Rabbeinu Yitzchak El Chonon. I am to the left, and Rabbi Yashiber Salavechik is to the right. It was right after he delivered uh, drosha to the musmochen. What year was this? Oh, I don't remember which. Oh, this year it must have been a ninety. Oh, the smicha, Chaga smicha. I got smicha in nineteen sixty-one. It must have been about nineteen sixty-three or something. Okay, this is a picture of the Chaga smicha itself in Yeshiva Rabbeinu Yitzchak El uh, I am seen here delivering the. Uh, the 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 address in the name of all the Talmidim, uh, of all the Musmochim, of uh, the Hagas Micha in Yeshivas Rabbein Yitzchon takes place every three years about, and all the Musmochim of those three years are present with their families, and here I'm addressing all of them. Okay, this is a picture of of, of Rav Shach and me. This picture was taken in 1994. Uh,
after my first wife pe- Miriam passed away, and she was buried in Eretz Yisrael and Haram Nuchais, so I went to visit Rav Shach. Uh, I am to the left, and obviously Rav Shach is to the right. Okay, this is a picture of the wedding of my youngest child, Svidov. The, the chasna took place in Chicago. He married the daughter of Rav Shmuel first. Her name is Sarah Gittel first. It's a picture of, first of all, my own family and uh, my wife and all my brother, uh, my brother-in-laws and sister-in-laws from the Munk family, all my Eineklech, and it was a very joyous occasion. Thank you. Okay. Uh, okay this is my wife, uh, Nechama. Her maiden name is Shereshevsky. Uh, she is the daughter of Rav Chaim Shereshevsky, who was a known uh, Talmud Chacham and Bal Musa in the Mira Yeshiva in, in Europe. And in the Mira Minyan here, he was a very Choshev Amench, a very ethical uh, uh, person on a very high Madrega. And uh, uh, after my first wife died in 1994, we, I married Nechama about a year and a half ago. In, we married in Eretz Yisrael, and uh, uh, all, all I, well, uh, her father was not in concentration camp, but he went through uh, Shanghai. No, he was not in Shanghai. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know. So where was it? Good, you, you explain. My father was uh, one, of these, one of the people that foresaw what was happening. He was the one responsible for closing Mary Yeshiva, Simchas Torah was the people there said that they remember the way they sang. What's the name of the song they sing when they put the Sefer Torah back? Su'u Sha'ar Moshechem. And he closed the yeshiva. And people could not believe what was happening, that the yeshiva was being closed, and he told people to go to Vilna. My father was on the last boat that crossed the Atlantic Ocean before the German um, submarines torpedoed all the boats that crossed. When was that? In nine, my father came to America in 1941. Oh, 41. Oh. Yeah, yeah. During yeah. the war, yeah? During the war he came. Oh, right, but right. I was in the camps, he was in the war. Right, right. Mm-hmm. He was coming here. My father had five brothers, and fi- my father was the youngest of eight children. My father was the only boy that survived where were they, the others killed? In, the in Baranovich, oh, in so Treblinka, in, Treblinka oh. in Warsaw, and in Auschwitz. Oh. And even after the war, my father had a, my father had one brother, a brother, not one brother, a brother who was married to a very hush of a woman. She was called the Sarashenir of Eretz Yisrael. What was her name? Pesya, Pesya Sharashevsky. And... Their only child was thrown in a bonfire in front of their eyes. Where was that? Um, that was in Washa Ghetto. Oh. Therefore, since he, his child's death preceded his, my fa- the Chazan Ish said, Paskin, that my father had to give her chalitza. So my father went to Eretz Yisrael in 1947. Agudis Harabanim wanted to pay for the trip, but my father didn't want to accept the money. My father was not a wealthy man. He taught in Chaim Berlin. He was a mashkiach there. He made maybe 15 or $20 a week. And from the money, year by year, it took him maybe 10 years, he paid. He took a loan from someone and he paid the money back because his father was alive then. And he said that it, he's going to be Mechabit, his father, and therefore nobody has to pay for that. He did. And he gave her Chalitza. She married someone, Rab Chaim Yazin. She came to America. She came to visit our house. Unfortunately, she contacted a very virulent form of cancer, and she died within a few months. There was no cure for her at that time. There were only six documented cases of the form of cancer that she had. The whole of Eretz Yisrael mourned her death from Shomer HaTzair of the left 
until the Chazan Ish in Bnei Brak. That's the kind of a personality that she was. And then I have cousins that really we were named after the same grandmother. And I have their picture. I don't have it here. I have it in my house in Eretz Yisrael. We're both like Fredel Shereshevsky, but they never made it. They were killed in Baranovich on Pesach. I put the name of all my father's brothers and their wives and their children on my father's gravestone on um, in Har Hazesim, so there should be some kind of memory. Yeah, I, for I them. should just add that my, my first wife's family, even though they were not in camps, they were also. They had to run away from my... He was off in Paris at the time. There's an interesting story about that. Yeah, and they had to escape and run away to Switzerland. Yeah, there's a whole story how they made it in the, in the, in the Alps and how they had to be smuggled. It's too long a story, and anyway... But I'm just mentioning this, that they also were survivors. Uh, they also... The Germans very often wanted to catch Valimov. Mrs. Bronspiegel, was there a connection with your father having been with Mir and the Vavit Sala with Rabbi Kalmanowitz in yeah, the United my father, States? M- yes, my father worked very hard for the Vavit Sala. My father showed me, this was like just a little bit before he died, maybe a year before. My father died 10 years ago. No, he I'm was 83. Okay. He was 83 years old. No, my father showed me letters. My father had one sister that was engaged to a boy from Slabotka, and my grandfather promised a lot of money for the Naden. My grandfather, during the period between the engagement and the marriage, lost money, and he told the chassan he could not come up with the amount that he wanted. So he broke the shidduch. At that time, when you were disengaged, it was a, da- a disaster. It was worse than divorce was today. She never went out of the house for two years. She stayed at home. During the war, he, mar- he remarried. He had five children. He was stuck someplace in Europe. He knew my father was in America. My father showed me the letter, a telegram that he wrote him, that he should please try to send him money to be able to sa- save himself and the five children. My father tried, but he doesn't know. The man never survived. My father doesn't know really what happened. My father did send packages to his brothers that were in the ghetto, when many people at the time told not to send because the Germans would be benefiting from the packages and not the Jewish people. But my father sent it anyways. And this Aunt Pesia that did survive the ghetto told my father that they really subsisted on those things that my father sent. It was like coffee and cocoa and chocolate. Either they sold it and they got money and they were able to buy you know, some basic supplements for living, but that those packages really uh, supported them while they were mm-hmm. in the ghetto. Thank you, Bob. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. We have a lot of, my father has a lot of telegrams from people that asked for help. My father also, I went to a wedding uh, two nights ago, a cousin of mine. My father saved his mother's life. This cousin of mine is a father of, so far, 21 <laughs> children. What's the name? Fishman, Yitzchak Fishman. His mother was a Sherishevsky. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Okay.